Hey, welcome to the Heat Press for Profit podcast here powered by Stalls. We are broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, and I think some other places as well. So if you're watching with us live, make sure you shout out in the comments where you're tuning in from and feel free to ask any questions. Uh, that's what we're here for, ready to help. So if you comment on any of the platforms where we're streaming, be it on the Stalls Facebook page or uh, on YouTube, we get them all right here in the studio studio in real time. So I'm able to answer your questions uh, and our guests will be able to see and answer your questions as well here too. Uh, so, uh, but if you're listening on anywhere that you listen to podcasts as this will be recorded and syndicated out there, that is just fantastic. And make sure you subscribe here to the show because we are dropping uh, new content every single week here. We're recording live uh, at noon, of course, on all of the platforms that I just mentioned, but then available to replay to listen to anywhere that you listen to podcasts. I'd also encourage you to head over to our Facebook page, the Heat Press for Profit group, uh, where you could actually interact with our guests like Trevor Murphy here today and other apparel decorators just like you at any time, get that experience and education and everything that that is great for. Now, this podcast specifically is designed to have conversations uh, with apparel decorators and industry experts built to inspire and educate to help brands and businesses of all sizes grow and achieve success. But I am very excited to say today that we have Trevor Murphy from Anheuser Designs with us here, who will be joining us. Trevor, thank you for coming on. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Dave. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate being here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. I love these lives. I love the podcast. I love uh, the YouTube videos that we get to do and even the in-person education. Uh, it's so great to hear from the community of apparel decorators just like you. And like I mentioned, the Heat Press for Profit group where you are a... A fairly, I think you're a top member. Do you have a little badge there yet? <laughs> I have the, co I think I have the coffee mug. I'm a, I'm a visual starter. The conversation starter, the conversation visual starter, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Well, that's the thing. I have my coffee right here. So we have our own little coffee cups. Yeah. We're going to sit down <laughs> and have a nice, nice little chat today. Yeah. Um, but you run Anheuser Designs, uh, your mm -hmm. own firm. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about, uh, yeah, Anheuser Designs, how it got started and uh, yeah, kind of where, how you even got into the apparel decorating industry. Um, well, apparel decorating, uh, you know, the later years now, um, I got started through disc golf. But to, to just start it all out, it, let me calm down. It's live. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, um, Anheuser Designs is a company. Uh, the name comes from a disc golf term. Um, it's a throw in disc golf where we actually make the disc do opposite of, a, of what it is actually was designed and intended to do. Um, so, uh, me and my buddy that, that started the company, um, we thought that was probably the best name because we were so out of the ordinary and that's kind of leading into what got me into apparel decorating, um, was the fact that I couldn't find disc golf apparel. Well, at least inexpensive disc golf apparel. <laughs> and, um, we were also, uh, starting a league, um, and a club. So at that point we needed some club and league apparel. So me and my buddy, Dan got together and we said, well, why don't we do this? And then I'm like, well, I live in this small little apartment. There's no way I'm going to put a big screen printer with a black room, you know, black room and, or a dark room and all this other stuff. Cause I had had that experience before. Well, here I am. And I'm like in this small apartment, I'm like looking it up, researching, doing all this stuff and figuring things out and boom, keep pressing. This is easy. I can do this. And uh, the next thing, one thing led to another and I'm making club apparel, my buddy's apparel, and we named it Anheuser Designs. I started selling stuff on Facebook um, through some marketplaces. Not even not even a marketplace. It was like a auction site, if you will, like an eBay. And then, then one thing led to another, and it actually became a real company. And uh, <laughs> it, it's long story short. Let's put it that way. I'm kind of long winded and don't want to take up the whole half hour on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way, so we can we can yeah. I have no no problems in following up this. But you did touch on a uh, a kind of really important thing. And it's something that I hear from apparel decorators all the time uh, in a very similar story to yours. And the advice that I give to people just starting out too is find that niche. Mm -hmm. uh, and you kind of talked about identifying that niche when you were like, hey, it's a hobby. It's an interest of mine. And I always say like, you don't have to look far. Uh, so I guess like, did you try it in anything else or was it really the 
that disc golf was kind of that niche, that catalyst that that kind of threw you into it? Well, I, I want to say disc golf is what launched it in, as a business. Um, I, going back as far as me being 16, 17 years old, back in high school, uh, we actually had screen printing class. It was like the coolest class ever. And I was addicted. So, but I, I, I didn't have the financial backing at, at 16 to start my own screen printing. And I didn't have, we didn't have the knowledge of the internet like we do now, you know, like where everything's kind of out there for us. So I bobbled along and always kind of, I've worked at a, at a screen printing place and I've worked at this, you know, t-shirt shop and I did things like that to kind of keep into it. But it was really disc golf and the sport itself uh, that launched it because I was, it, it became like, Hey, can I get my PDG? We have PDGA numbers, a professional disc golf association. So everybody gets their own number. My, I, my personal number is five, six, zero, three, three. You look that up on the PDGA, you can see how bad I am at disc golf. <laughs> um, so a lot of times that, that became a big thing. Like, well, I want my club logo here, but can I get my PDJ number on the sleeve or on the side of the hat or uh, how do I do this? So that's what kind of launched the idea that I can do custom work. And, and so it then became, oh, disc golf is a custom sport. I, I can do bags. I can do shirts, hoodies. And so that kind of just kept evolving it. So disc golf is what took me over the edge and made me an apparel decorator. <laughs> and growing too. And that customization coming from that kind of like screen printing background or mm -hmm. understanding the process of it, offering that level of customization is incredibly time consuming, difficult. And mm -hmm. if you're just printing one or two offs for a specific customer, that's not something that's going to be, it's cost prohibitive when exactly. you're trying to add customization like that. So is that kind of really where that, yeah, I guess, heat yeah. printing Feel oh, yeah. that need because what I would do is I, I started kind of in, in Facebook, uh, selling on Facebook on the auction page that I talked about was I was doing towels and I was actually making these towels and they were auctioning, you know, the way the auction group would go is you'd post it with, you know, your cool little logo. I had this addicted logo that's three baskets. It looks like an Adidas logo, kind of a ripoff copyright infringement all over the place. <laughs> um, but I'm selling it on this market and and they would say five bucks, you know, it have to lay that bid would stay for 24 hours and then they would get it and they could add personal or customization to it for two or three bucks. And I kind of didn't know that that was a thing. You know, I thought I was doing something like super cool special <laughs> and, uh, so what, what ends up happening is that's now fueling my event registrations So for to play disc golf. So no longer am I working and hustling my nine to five to play for, to fuel my disc golf urge to go play, buy discs and do all that. Now I've got this little marketplace and, and I'm heat pressing disc golf, you know, towels on the side and making my registration money to go play. And then it kept evolving. So that the customization became the biggest and, and it's still the hottest seller for us here. Mm -hmm. got, that's got that's it. awesome. And you kind of talked about it, but like, yeah, you marketing through Facebook. Is that something that um, you kind of <laughs> still do today? Because like, I mean, that's a great mm -hmm. I tell people that all the time, especially like when when we're talking about niches or an interest that you already have. Number one, you already know, like because where the idea mm -hmm. for towels came up because you're like, Man, I want it to, I have, I'm carrying around towels all the time when I'm playing right. disc golf, right? right? Wiping off the discs. I know at least I played in college. I, <laughs> I used to play in college and right. every single time those discs end up on the ground. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. when you're not too good. I bet you're better than me. I don't even have a number. <laughs> oh, it's been, it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing and printing more now than I am playing disc golf. So I don't know. We, we might be head to head right there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, when you identify that niche, you get to f see like what, what specific styles, what, what products even then? Cause I mean, we usually are typically talking about t-shirts, but then you start talking about those other products and then marketing them through that kind of Facebook auction place. Do you still use uh, that as a marketing method today or how has I that grown or walk us through that, that kind of evolution as your the, business has grown? The, the auction groups kind of like for me have, I, I kind of went away from them because I didn't, it, it didn't seem as legitimate as I started legitimizing my business, I was, I, I felt it more of a side hustle, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I, I'm like, I gotta get a Shopify or get an Etsy together. And so that's what I then initially did was I, I pulled myself away from doing the constant auction pages because they weren't consistent. You, you're only allowed to auction so many towels at a time or hats or shirts or whatever you're limited. So 
moving to a an e-com was the biggest boldest move that i made so i went to etsy did successful there but then i wanted more freedoms went into shopify but as far as the marketing goes the marketing has never left facebook um, it's never left instagram it's never left twitter um, it's never left my personal profile as well as because i i have a problem i like to over advertise myself on my pro personal profile pages um but that's the way i'm i've kind of been built i want to sell 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 to anybody and everybody that's out there i want to advertise to everybody that's out there. and you so. kind of have you have to tell people what right. you do and i know anytime that you're talking about stuff i used to play in a band all the time so i know that over self-promotion mm -hmm. on facebook when somebody's like oh dave's talking about playing another gig at a bar again like but i you, you know you kind of just have to tell people to do that and that is i think a great social media tip too because a lot yeah. of people do get intimidated or get worried that like it's going to be like I, I, like it's just you know it's not going to make sense or it's going to be a waste of time or people are going to think it's stupid, but especially right. like as it relates to TikTok is one thing that I've seen be really volatile uh, to businesses, probably similar to back when you started. Cause what year was that, that you were first advertising on Facebook? Oh, we're going back 20, 2012, 2011, okay. yeah, 2012, 2013. So we're still kind of in that infancy of like that boom of Facebook and the same right. with TikTok here today is like, if you are showing your passion and drive for a niche or a hobby or uh, your own business, being an entrepreneur, that right there, 100%, as long as you are being, you're speaking authentically yep. and being you is better than 99% of the stupid <laughs> right. dance videos that are out there on TikTok right. or Facebook or wherever right. it may be. We're so inundated by it that like, I think that's a great tip to just like, you got to stick with it. Sometimes it's maybe it, it looks to yourself because you see every post that it's like, oh my God, it's so much, but it mm. really isn't for the people who commonly see your stuff or the people who are like engaging with it. I know right. I love, we kind of talked about it at the top of the show, but like the heat press for profit, that community. And yes. I love, I love seeing the cool stuff that you and all of the other decorators are creating. It's just incredibly powerful to, you know, to, to see what's <laughs> trending and everything else like that. So that's really interesting that like You've your store evolved, right? Right. But right. your marketing has stayed very, very similar in the same. And is that right. like, I mean, is that directly related to that audience? Is that like the main place, like for, uh, let's say, disc golf enthusiasts? Do they stay in those Facebook groups as opposed to like Reddit or something like that? Or is that anything uh, that you've ever thought about? Not anything I've really thought about. I mean, my, I kind of go by what. I utilize the most. I'm not really a big Reddit person. I'm not mm -hmm. a big TikToker, so I don't. And that's probably my downfall um, because I don't advertise or I don't utilize those sites as much as I should. I like Facebook a ton because there's that's where all my friends are. Um, but, I like, but that's where the niche yeah. is. That's where your audience right. is. So, but if, there's a lot on there. Reddit. And there's, <laughs> there's other people that you know. There's other people, other spots that I'm missing out on because I don't venture. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I, you know, I, I need to evolve myself. I'm kind of at a at a turning point where it's like, you know, I think everybody is. We're Facebook. Is it, you know, are we utilizing Facebook as much as we're utilizing TikTok and Instagrams? But I've, I remember when Instagram was an infant and, and, mm -hmm. and nobody hardly even knew I had like a, a I think I had 200 posts and people are like, what's Instagram, you know? And now it's like the, a big thing. So it, you just have to learn to evolve. And I think at a point, I'm at a point where I'm like, uh, I'm stuck and I need to evolve. So I, I'm kind of looking and I hear things about TikTok and I hear things about other social medias and I'm, I get interested and I'm going, Oh, Whoa, let, let me check this out. Like I have a guy, he's out in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he sends me to uh, Reddit uh, things about disc golf and other varieties of stuff. And I'm like, what is Reddit? And it actually was like an eye opener for me. I'm cause I'd always just ignored it. I'm like, what's Reddit? I can't, I don't understand. Yeah. Um, but then once I got into it and I started reading a little bit more, now I'm getting a little bit more comfortable. So you, you might see more, more of me Redditing. I don't know yeah. if that's a, it's, if that's a term. A Redditing <laughs> Redditor. Uh, but yeah, all of those, all of those places all around the internet. I actually just personally don't Reddit all that much, but I know that there's great forums. I see resources there all the time for uh, t-shirt decorating or yes. apparel decorating or anything like that. And all of those niches and markets too. So, um, but yeah, I, I would always say like, wait, where you like, you know, if it's like your friends are playing disc golf, that's where my audience is, right. you know, at least like right. that core audience that you have. So, uh, 
I mean, as it relates to, I mean, the hobby as it first was a, the, you know, your hobby of disc golf and I guess a, a hobby and a, bir- a business that birthed up and kind of grew together. Yeah. Uh, has it primarily been like your main form of marketing? Obviously, you said like was like on Facebook and stuff. But how else have you grown your business in there? Did I, I know you mentioned events. So like yep. have those events and word of mouth helped grow your services? Are you using any branding? I just love to hear kind of the Absolutely. evolution of that yeah. as, as well as, you know, kind of how it, how it relates to your story. Yeah. Here. So, uh, well, I, I do host uh, disc golf events um, here in town when I, when I, I want to say about 2012, I had moved from Florida. I had discovered disc golf in Florida and I moved back up here to kind of be with my family. Um, this is where I'm from. This is where I was born. Um, I wanted to be back here. So I moved back and I was really into disc golf, really hyped up. And the closest disc golf courses in near town were about 40 minutes away. And I'm like, this sucks. You know, so I, I petitioned to the, to the parks and I ended up installing two local disc golf courses in town. Wow. So that really, you know, fueled the disc golf fire. You're, you're building your audience right there. Yes. literally. <laughs> yes. And it's like the best, like, I don't want to say one, one of the best courses we, you guys were at at Buell Park. Mm-hmm. Um, that course there. And then there, as well, there is the Pines, which is about five minutes down the road the other way. And there are two totally different courses. One's wooded, one's very open. So anyways, I host events on those courses now that they're installed. And coming up uh, April 20th and 24, no, 22nd and 23rd is what I, is the eighth annual early bird open at Buell Park. Um, we're hosting 154 players. Um, players then will get a t-shirt towel and a cool, not this disc. This is from the SVDG open, but a nice little Frisbee tossing disc for themselves and a player's pack. So that's That's all for the amateur. So I've been doing that with the club. And then we've been doing that for about eight years. We host an event. Uh, we used to host the SVDG open, which was a two day event at both courses in the summer, but I'm kind of taking a step back and enjoying my summer this year. <laughs> so, but, uh, <laughs> cause we would, we did that for 10 years. Um, I did that for 10 years, but this one we're doing for, this was eighth year is the early bird open. And then we host the Maynard, which will be, uh, the sixth year. Um, and that's at the pines. We do that one exclusively at the pines. So another kind of deal with the player packs is they get a t-shirt or a hoodie or a towel, or we'll, you know, kind of me and the tournament directors will get together and we'll decide and, yeah, it's, it's really cool. And, and that kind of helps churn the business, but also helps advertise as well as, you know, get the name out there because they're getting a T-shirt with, you know, maybe a little Anheuser designs here or on a sleeve or something. Then they're going to a disc golf event and going, man, that's a cool T-shirt. Where'd you get it? Oh, I went to this event, Anheuser designs. And then it that's just kind of grassroots. You know, I, hear I know that story a yeah, lot, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never paid for an advertisement. <laughs> that's that's great and that's the way to do it yeah either and then, organic and and yep. word of mouth but i don't want to cut you off keep going keep cool. going and, and then another great way for for any of you guys out there is sponsor events get out there and sponsor t-ball events sponsor hockey events sponsor something the events you, that and, need shirts right right that's, and, that's and, awesome and, to be able to build it in with those event uh, event organizers and, and, a, and a great way to to even to sponsor is okay you give your your um your customer a price of say 13 dollars per t-shirt but let me sponsor you and I'll give you those t-shirts for $12 a t-shirt, but I'm going to put my logo. Now it's going to add you an extra press, but put a logo on, you know, on a logo on the sleeve and I'll give you those shirts for 12 bucks. And now you've done free advertising for 50 to hundred people because they're going to take that home. They're going to go to the bar. They're going to go to the restaurant and your logo is going to be out there. So that's another way to brand or kind of, grassroots an idea you know i mean t-shirts are the walking billboard right it is and then there's enough backs on in the planet to host a t-shirt every day of the week so (laughs) there sure is (laughs) i know i I know you said it's tied to a lot of events uh that like well i mean i don't want to say like because disc golf at least here in the midwest because you're right outside the the pittsburgh area for what you call home right I'm, I'm about, well, as uh, the band Fish would say, you know, since you're a musician, you probably know the band Fish. <laughs> I am yep. half, I, as they would sing, I am halfway between Erie and Pittsburgh. <laughs> so right the, there. Uh, oh. Bittersweet Motel. Yeah. <laughs> so you are, you are, uh, uh, you understand the Midwestern winters that we have here and being mm-hmm. with an outdoor sport tied to, um, uh, tied to our, our, you know, I guess weather. Essentially, you are printing almost year round. Then, though, for 
for disc golf, aren't you? I saw you were posting yeah. something for a uh, a tournament or a series yeah. coming up that plays yeah. through the winter. Well, they play. They actually play all year long. They're uh, the the club is a huge organization in Northeast Ohio known as the NEO Disc Golf Alliance. Um, they ha- they there's micro clubs that are all around Northeast Ohio, but there's one mega club that kind of helps uh, contour tee pads and help raise funds for these courses. Um, they host an event throughout the winter known as the Frozen Fingers on the Fairway Tour. I was actually a TD way back in the day for one of them. Um, but they host, um, I want to say it's eight seven or eight locations throughout the winter um, playing every other weekend. They'll play two rounds of disc golf of 18 holes. And usually and this, the, the, the guy that's got the event going this year is like a record breaker uh, where he's had like 190 players in these winter events where it's like 30 degrees, 10 degrees. I, I think there was a snowstorm a couple weekends ago, if you remember. <laughs> and, yeah, these these guys are nuts. Like, I'm too old for that anymore. <laughs> you got t-shirts to print. You want to stay in the warmth. I want to stay in the warmth by the heat press. <laughs> but yeah, so we did the hoodies for them, which was really awesome. They did it as the fundraiser. Um, they fundraised the event for the third event. Um, yeah, it was event number three. Um, it was the Frozen Fingers logo, but then on the back, we did uh, just like the like a kind of like a tour Shirt, you know, mm-hmm. like we're played here at this place, Parma, Euclid, and all the the Ohio courses down mm-hmm. through. So to down to the final, and I got to give a big shout out to Scott Campbell for uh, he did the design for the uh, Frozen Fingers and as well as in the back. So nice. it wasn't my artwork. I, I can't give. Yeah, you know, I didn't steal it. Well, because that's something too. I mean, the name of your business, <laughs> Anheuser Designs, is that right. something that's helped you? Like, yeah, do you do you typically do custom designs? It's always nice when the customer has artwork ready to go. But is it that is. a service that you offer that kind of mm-hmm. helps differentiate you and and market your brand? Absolutely. Um, I, actually, just in the Heat Press for Profit group that I I posted today of the Cuyahoga Falls uh, played against sports. Uh, John, the, the manager there, he sent me a, <laughs> a if, I could, if I had a pen nearby, I would show you. It was just a circle with <laughs> P-I-A-S, Cuyahoga Falls, bubble font. What's the shirt color? So, you know, and I'm shrugging my shoulders for those listening in Spotify. So, <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what the color is. I just bubble font circle. Does it pertain to disc golf? And he goes, yes. So I did a chain, you know, and that's all I could do. I'm like, all right, what do you think? So, and he liked it and and we went on with it and we produced the, the shirts and stuff. But yeah, it, it is definitely, it's definitely a part of, a part of it, but it's definitely a hindrance as well because people kind of come to me going, I need shirts. Yeah. You know, well, what? Uh, that's great. What do you what want do you, on them? What, what do you want on them? <laughs> uh, uh, do, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> do, do they hit you? They hit you with like the uh, the. Uh, I don't know. I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, I've had. The, <laughs> I have those. I have. The, I just got done with one of those. Um, what I've and and this is a great. This is a great tip. Um, start off with three. Start mm-hmm. off one, two, and three. If you're if you're doing design, start off with three, and that's it. If you want a revision, we're gonna have to talk cost. Mm-hmm. That's well, it. Because if not, you're going to have, well, can you do this? Can you do this? <laughs> it's it's just not sustainable. And I make the joke all the time when, when because I get hit with it with a 15 years of freelance design. I've been doing it since I was in high school that like, uh, I wow. mean, so probably even longer than that. I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit older than wow. 15 years out of high school. But <laughs> essentially they say like, yeah, I'll know it when I see it. And it's like, mm. well, this isn't Netflix. Like this isn't <laughs> browsing around. Like well, I'm going to make custom art for you and I'm going to have to spend time and invest time into this. And so that, that turns into, I mean, if you're charging the industry rate, it's like $50 an hour and you're going to spend at least an hour. But um, I know you preach about the marketing kit a lot as like the solution for that, being able to kind of browse some designs. And then especially too, with like hammering down on a niche and being so involved and ingrained in it, you, you know, exactly then you want it to pertain to disc golf and then bam, all right, we're going to put some chains on it and make right. it look like, because that's how, that's what I know people are going to see. I mean, and for people not even into the sport, I see them in the local parks and like it catches your eye because it's a, yeah. it's not it's not a tree out there in no. the park. And it's like, yeah. oh, there's disc golf here. That's cool. So like it's, it's a familiar kind of uh, uh, imagery or aesthetic that you're able to provide to your customers. And do you charge for that? Or is that something that, I mean, you you go free to the three, re, three designs. Well, and then when you go revisions, you go, hey, uh, it, it all depends really when it comes to my design work and what I do 
for the customer, it depends on the customer. If, mm -hmm. if I have a customer that I've done, like Buell Park, for instance, I, my, my buddy up there, Julie, she'll say, hey, I need this designed really quick. Can you do this? She's also a designer herself. I'll do a free one for her, no problem. You know, like it, it really all just depends. And it's as well, there's, a, there's actually an upcoming uh, event that I'm going to do for uh, shirts that I'm doing for an event called Gray Matters. Um, and I did the design absolutely for free for the guy because it's an actual fundraiser for brain tumors and, and the brain tumor society. So it's kind of like my heart's on the sleeve. I, I, I don't want to, you know, so there's some, but if a corporate guy comes up to me, if the sheets rep comes up to me and says, Hey, can you do sheets stuff for me? Absolutely. All right. You're going to pay for this one, buddy. <laughs> I know you've got the budget for it. <laughs> I, I really hope he's not listening. He is a friend of mine. <laughs> Crap. But, but I think that's a, that's a great way to, to look at it, you know, and, and it's a, it's a piece by piece and some, for a lot of businesses, especially small businesses, uh, not every job is the same, especially no. when you talk about no. scope or even the size of it. If it's just a couple, you know, pieces and it's a buddy, like, but I've, I, I'll be completely honest. I've been burned by friends mm -hmm. who you're, helping out quote unquote, yeah. you know, and then it's like, well, I just, I lost out on time that I could have been spent printing more t-shirts or, right. uh, you know, as you get busier printing t-shirts is like, I, that's time I could have spent out disc golfing. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and I don't spend any time disc golfing anymore. I'm too busy printing <laughs> <laughs> or designing. It's, <laughs> it's taken, it's taken over. <laughs> right. So it, it's just about, yeah, it's just really, you want to look at it. Like you don't want to give away your time, but mm -hmm. you also don't want to look like you're gouging time either you know if, if it's a good design and it's something that i know that people are going to go oh where did who did that mm -hmm. anheuser trevor did it anheuser designs then i'm going to get again that grassroots advertising mm -hmm. word of mouth is my biggest thing i used to be in a band myself way back in the day so driving in a van handing out the flyers that's kind of where my mo of sales came from so yeah the bread and butter tried and yeah. true there's yeah. uh, and and they're all just tools in your toolbox you could use yeah. to help kind of grow that business right. um but, but as we talk about those tools is there one that you could identify has has made the largest impact on your business um and you're talking about just like like a machine or are you talking like social media promotional tools uh, sponsoring events or anything like okay. yeah like yeah more more than just like equipment but yeah like i was gonna the, say the, the, the hot side. tronics <laughs> <laughs> transfer express no. <laughs> stalls um the the biggest thing is, is is the is community i think is just the the that's the biggest impact is to be able to Oh crap! I'm getting off. Um, I... Well, and, but I mean, if you're talking community, I mean, you have two communities that you are ingrained Absolutely. and a huge part of. If you're talking right. disc golf, or uh, subsequently that heat press for profit community and the apparel decorating community, that's I'm sure helped you along the way, just oh, as you crazy. are helping. You're reaching crazy. back and helping people now. Um, crazy. But so it has, yeah. Has it been just really that like the disc golf community that's just embraced you? Uh, I mean, if you've been the, the sole supplier, kind of, you found, you found the, uh, you identified the problem, you came up with the solution and now like, there's really nobody else cutting into that space where like, uh, are, are you the go-to guy or? No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just maybe in my little pond, uh, mm -hmm. I'm the go-to guy. There, there's a lot of, when I said there wasn't any disc golf apparel out there, there's disc golf apparel out there. Um, I just for my local area that didn't have disc golf and didn't know what disc golf was, I was the only guy explaining disc golf. And then once they got hooked, they went to disc golf apparel and so on and so forth. So in my region, in my little Shenango Valley area, I'm the go-to custom guy um, that, that can, has the two week turnaround. That's the big point selling point right now. Yeah. Um, Cause a lot of local screen printers, they're in seasonal times, you know, they're yeah. doing football, baseball, basketball all the time. Um, my biggest thing is two week turnaround. I can get transfer express. I can get your stuff in right now. Boom. I got, I'm an hour South of Menor, So even I can go play disc golf, snag up my, my, my transfers. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I lived close, closer to a warehouse, uh, for S and S, but, uh, <laughs> you know, order up the, order up the apparel and have a two week turnaround. That's been the biggest seller, um, that we've had so far, but, um, but see, I, I love. I love hearing that story though, because even as like a wide world that it actually is in any niche that you're going to target. Like I was just on TikTok today looking at like uh, I saw uh, it's like Mel's 
crafty corner or something, but it's uh, it's all about like RN and nurse right. apparel, right? And it's right. like, yes, there's stuff all over, but if you find that uh, that specific, you know, that that niche audience, that is your local regional community. It is right. it is uh, you're able to service it and become that expert or become that go to. And I'm really glad you mentioned the differentiators too that could help raise your business up because it's something for a lot of other decorators uh, that they get scared looking at national competition or other disc right. golf brands that go like, man, can I fit into it? But yeah, you talked on turn time, but there's also like quality and price and service. And local then you had, pick up delivery. There's all that stuff all that you could it. throw on as a differentiator that's going to set your business really apart there. And then and then as far as the niche goes, niche goes as well, you even in, in disc golf or any, if you're working with softball, baseball, any of these community events, the thing that you need to look at are the, not just the players, the coaches, the, the coaching staff and the people that you want to sell t-shirts to look at the people in the stands, look at those people. Cause they're there for the same sport. There's there for the same game. They're watching the same thing and you don't know what they need. Because they might be the community guy that's that's now the Sharon Beautification Commission, and he needs a hundred and some shirts for this volunteer project. Your niche doesn't stop where the sport ends, or where the niche ends. It it, it only expands from there. Your niche is only going to grow to a different niche, or a, as the MCU, if I don't get sued for saying this, it'll turn into a multiverse of niches. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you know. Don't get stuck. I, I'm all about the niche. Don't get me wrong, but don't get stuck. Don't get yeah. blind. Don't put the blinders on and say, this is all I'm going to do. And that's it. Well, cause yeah, like you said, like when you put that, that sponsorship opportunity on your shoulder uh, or the sleeve print, the, the right. yoke, uh, and then you're able to, to have those worn out in public and especially, you know, with disc golf, like, yeah, I might own a, a construction company or a right. landscaping business where it's like, Oh, well, I really like the quality of this shirt or this print. Where did I get it from? Boom. You've already set it up uh, and ready exactly. to go. We are getting near the end of our time here, but I did oh. want to go to our comments uh, from all of our friends uh, watching and commenting up with us. Uh, and there's one from Goody Matt says, uh, I'm up in Michigan. Let's pull this one up on our screen. I'm up in Michigan where home brewing clubs are big. Do you have advice on how to help those clubs that maybe have a logo already, but not vector? Um, Goody Matt is here, very new. Uh, so he's just looking for some guidance. So uh, how would you approach that one if you had a customer like that uh, who kind of approached you? Um, let's see. Uh, uh, kind of how do you get from... I'm, 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 tr I'm trying to understand the question. Mm -hmm. I hope those clubs are, or be able to service those, those home brewing clubs that have a logo, but it's not vector. Uh, so would you, yeah, I guess, would you redraw that? Would you use specific programs to, to oh, yeah. vectorize it with your experience? And I guess we'll break it down in, in very new business terms in case, uh, you know, I have my designer jargon I could <laughs> right. throw out here, but nobody's going to understand it unless, unless you're in the know. If if you can redesign uh, their logo, do it. Try to redesign it to the best, almost mirror image of what they're doing. If you can't, and if it's, I, I just came across this where the image that I was sent was, ooh, I, I don't want to put that on a shirt. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just something that looks looks very good. I, I didn't like the artwork. And so what I did was I did up something different and I said, I, I really like what you have. This is what we can do. This is going to be your price. But here's a suggestion of my idea that was just off the top of my head. And mm -hmm. it's a lot more comfortable then to, to that then breaks the ice for, for the conversation of either a redesign or something of that nature. Cause now they know that you're creative mm -hmm. now that they know that you want to work with their design. So that it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes too, uh, a lot of people don't understand art and coming from a background, it is something that comes with experience of, you know, being in the t-shirt printing industry, but regardless of how you're putting ink on fabric, large, full areas of like yeah. solid ink coverage it has a white background and they want it to be a 12 inch wide circle on the front and it's a white background and everything's on this way at background where like coming from that experience when you're vectorizing it you start pulling elements out so yeah. you have the th the show through going to the shirt so you have a much better hand feel i yeah. mean this is regardless if you're using transfers direct screen printing even direct to garment right. uh you're putting ink 
covering up a breathable fabric. So yeah. just being able to put those things in there makes a t-shirt that people want to wear. So right. um, yeah. I know there's programs out there. Of course, you could always go with like uh, the, the fibers or stuff like that. Yeah. Or, you know, have some, some outsource kind of workflow. You pay somebody five bucks to vectorize a file. Yeah. Uh, or I think I saw in the chat here in some of these comments, people were throwing out like affinity designer or uh, even the online designer at transfer express. I know that uh, you've shown I'm some, using. you, you, uh, you use a lot of the easy view online designer and you come from a traditional uh, background <laughs> essentially mm -hmm. from, from graphic design as, as do I, but it is that it is that like it helps me be much more efficient because I could just oh, yeah. uh, look at those designs and use them as inspiration instead of like, oh, well, I need to find this athletic block font. Let's warp it to a path in, like it, with the illustrator oh, yeah. terms. Here's this designer. Jargon, <laughs> that, right? But like, yeah, type on a path tool, you get the arch and then it's like, right. well, let me find a, a palm tree clip art to pull in here where it's like. That essentially is there, and with a couple of double clicks, you could customize it. Especially those simple uh, layouts for our yep. question here from Matt. Uh, that like if simple layouts, you could usually recreate it in a design software, um, and then you have a vector file. But Live Trace and Illustrator, uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve. But of course, uh, even if it's not vector, you could still order it at a ton of places. Um, Transfer Express stalls included, uh, or in the EasyView Online Designer that even has that like functionality in there. Um, we have one more question I think we have here. There's, there's, oh, there's some more coming in. Um, so yeah, uh, I see Jane added here um, just about uh, an art service, couldn't get it right uh, and ended up using the sil the silhouette designer uh, to cut it out of vinyl. So like that is perfect stuff here. Um, let's see, uh, Stevie J's custom creations. Uh, where do you suggest placing your business logo on shirts so people could see it, who made it and can contact you for more so uh yeah you kind of touched on a few of them but let's talk about some more uh solutions that you could use the sleeve obviously um what i'm actually i don't know why i've been i've been working with transfer express for as long as i have and i haven't done tags <laughs> i haven't done and i need that tag along platen so okay. if you've got a spare sitting around you want to hang it <laughs> but the tag is another good spot. Um, a fr uh, ambassador friend of mine, Eric, um, he actually does them down on the bottom of his jerseys, like a, a little tag. Like um, in that, uh, the, the like the left side hip. side seam hip yeah. area, like yeah. that, uh, the jersey, where if you like get a, a jersey yep. or like a champion, champion yep. puts that little tag down there. Yep. Too. He, he, he's on uh, the heat press for profit. Uh, Eric, I forget his last name, um, but he's one of our ambassadors. Mm -hmm. um, that's another spot. I've also done them on the back of the neck. Like not on, you know, where the tag is on the underside, but on the backside. So that way it's visible. And, and that like noticeable. yoke print, the upper yep. back yoke yep. print we talk about. Yep. Yeah. And those are great ways too, that you can mix every single location you just talked about sleeve, uh, upper back, even if there's like uh, events, a lot of times you'll see the sponsor logos in the kind of logo farm oh, yeah. that we call it on the back where like you could fit it there. Um, and yeah, I even, some, is... even with my logo with, with my disc golf events, I throw my logo somewhere like here in the, in this one here, right there in the sunshine is my logo. Boom. Right. So it's, yeah, nice and yeah, subtle. Whatever. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's a little, oops. I don't, uh, yeah. I'm it's, not, weird, it's, can... it's weird when it's backwards. You don't know right. where you're pointing. <laughs> but we see it, yeah, right, right. in the sunshine yep. there. Yeah, so, I, you know, I've done that a few times on the discs, on shirts, on everything. So if, I, if, I, if I'm hosting an event or sponsoring an event and I've done the artwork, I've hidden my logo like a Where's Waldo in there somewhere. <laughs> That's awesome to be able to find it. But yeah, yeah. I love I love the the promotional power of T-shirts. I yeah. always like I encourage everybody to brand as much as you can, and especially yeah. like for you mentioned the tag prints. That's something yeah. that we see all the time, and I've heard from other decorators that like if you get that that five k or a large event, say like the mm -hmm. I mean like if you're printing one hundred and ninety shirts for this winter series, yep. the Frozen Fingers, like oh, yeah. Number one, those guys are crazy. That's hard. That's hardcore <laughs> dedicated to the sport and the winner. Yeah, it the is. They, give but it up to them. Give it up to them. <laughs> anybody else who I always say, like every three years, there every single person has a need for a T-shirt, whether it be like the business picnic or a family get together, a family reunion, or a vacation, oh, like yeah. something as simple as that, or like Timmy needs little league shirts or something. That like just having that inside tag print, it is not visible. So even if the even if the that that brand or that event wants to maintain the integrity of the design of the shirt you right. could still put your branding on the inside and they're gonna be like oh i don't care about it but right. that wearer of the t-shirt those 190 people who participated mm -hmm. in that series now they're gonna need a shirt 
somewhere down the line and they're going to go, man, I really like the fit and feel and the, and the print feel still looks shirt. great. Yep. Who printed this? And instead of having Hanes or Gildan or Next right. Level or Bella Canvas <laughs> on the inside tag, it's your brand. So right. they immediately go to it. And I always say like, yeah, put your put your information in there, what you do and how to contact you. We've even yep. seen with like the rise of direct to film printing QR codes, being able yeah. to be printed at like small scale that are yeah, still hold that detail to have that scan. And so all ideas that I've heard from other decorators <laughs> and uh, put some videos I'm, together. <laughs> right in all my, hold on, wait, just give it. <laughs> QR codes? Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, Maria asked here, we'll do one more question. Uh, are social media platforms free to advertise your company? I think if yes. you do it right. So yes. yeah, shed some light on how you did it right to uh, to not have to pay a dime for advertising. Because there definitely is, you could get no, down that slippery slope of paying a can, lot of money. You can, you can boot, you know, I'll just stick with Facebook right now. Um, if you have a business account, get the meta business. Um, suite that they they offer for free. Um, what I do is I, I run a post. I'll run a story, which I make an advert like an advertisement. It's just a simple story, you know, story um, from at night or I'm sorry, 7 a.m. 5 p.m. every day, uh, Monday through Friday. There's an ad that goes out that's just posted by me because you can schedule them on the the meta suite. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do a post at five o'clock and nine o'clock on my Facebook, not on my Instagram. Cause I don't want to over flood that, but Facebook, it kind of gets more churned through with everything else that's on Facebook. Um, and I also schedule those in, they're just static, uh, like an advertisement. Hey, two week turnaround, custom quotes, come check me out. Anheuser designs. Here's my phone number. I do put my phone number out on Facebook. I don't know. I'm crazy. Um, but those will go out and then Every week, I just return them, and I'll, I'll do a different color, I'll do a different look, I'll do a different image, and those go out. So as long as you're you're utilizing um, social media, just don't go overboard. Don't don't boost your posts. <laughs> I think you can boost them, and, and it does help, and it, it is, but it, for the small business, it doesn't make sense. Well, and it could get very costly very quick, especially very, if yeah, you don't have the audience targeted specifically. So no, and, and if but, you keep churning in you know you, you try to get more viewers and more viewers and you're paying five more bucks and ten more bucks and it becomes almost a scam <laughs> a slippery a slippery scope <laughs> a slippery yeah. slope yeah we've heard of some success uh from apparel mm. decorators using oh, yeah. ads uh and we have a webinar coming up in a couple weeks uh maybe even next week about using social media as a tool but this has been absolutely fantastic i feel like we could talk all day and be here all day <laughs> But unfortunately, we are out of time here today. I want to thank everybody for joining us here. Trevor, thank you so much for, for tuning in. We're going to have to have you back, I think, to hey. finish this conversation <laughs> and talk about more marketing trends, uh, especially for small businesses. That was great to get into on that um, and even talk about our art, promoting our business. And yeah, I love I love the the how you kind of have embraced the, the disc golf to build this brand, build this business. Uh, and it's Thank awesome you. to see the success and the, the, just the incredible creativity that you guys keep, uh, keep pushing out, uh, especially in the, in the community that we talked about. If you guys aren't uh, a part of the heat press for profit community on Facebook, uh, get on over there. Cause that's one of those communities yeah. that we mentioned that it's especially awesome. just being brand new to the industry, like some of the questions that we took here today uh, from Matt, uh, there is help there that's going to tell you the right the right product types to use or uh, the right methods to be printing it or maybe even like, oh, hey, you could adjust your turn time like this. I see these conversations happen all the time and just tons and tons of inspiration. You see mm -hmm. current trends, uh, even if you don't maybe have the high volume yet, you could kind of see what trends are are being requested and decorated by just what people are sharing in those groups. So we encourage you to come on out. Uh, we could continue the conversation there in Facebook posts all the time. I know I'm in there uh, <laughs> commenting on stuff all the time. Uh, and like, uh, yeah, just another one the other day, like there were some really awesome hats. I think Ty Kane posted and like, yep. oh man, I have to say like the, the detail on this rope on this hat, like, dude, where is it coming from? So uh, really, really cool stuff. But thank you guys for hanging out with our Heat Press for Profit podcast. Uh, we do go live every single Friday at noon uh, with some different hosts. I know we've had Josh Ellsworth and Kelly Walters last week, me this week. Uh, you're going to have to tune in to see who's who's going to be joining us next week as well. Big shout out to Trevor Murphy. Again, thank you so much. Uh, and thank if you, you want to check out Anheuser Designs and hit the, hit the course and throw some discs, Trevor's going to be your guy, right? 
You know it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I want to thank, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in. Have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Happy pressing.